welcome everybody. It's good to have you here. If you will, come grab a seat. We've got several right up here. You can grab one of those. Uh, it's nice to have uh, this fun crowd. Who's excited to hear from Sarah? Yeah, me too. She is amazing. I know that's one of the reasons many of you have come. And uh, I look forward to that as well. And uh, I think everyone's excited to learn about how to use video to help grow your business too. So really excited about that. So welcome to Rev Road, Rev U. Uh, if, just so uh, if you're new, I wanna make sure that you know this. This is something that's available every month, the first Thursday of the month from 11 to one. And we're excited to have you be a part of this one. Uh, we've got a great lineup. Uh, throughout the entire year, actually, with great speakers, featured founders who are going to be speaking, and really cool workshops on topics that can help you grow your business while keeping it. Okay, um, so let me just start by sharing uh, that today's uh, workshop is going to be focused on video. Uh, anyone seen any cool videos that have made you want to buy a product before? Yeah? Okay, definitely, me too. Um, there's, there's always, always something, something that comes, that comes immediately, immediately to mind. mind. And, and interestingly, interestingly, there are a lot, lot of patterns, patterns in those successful videos. videos. And, and that's, that's what we're going to learn a little bit about today. today. Uh, this, this overview will be done by uh, Tigran. And, and Tigran is our uh, uh, video producer. producer. He heads, heads up our video production team. And, and he is an incredibly talented individual. Earlier in my career, I had the privilege of producing a children's television show. And, uh, and uh, in doing, doing that, that, I also, also got, got to do it with my friend and colleague here, Diane Demick. That, that was a really, really exciting thing. thing. Uh, we, we got, got to build that. that. It's, it's now, now being broadcast on over uh, 250 uh, cable, cable and satellite systems, systems around the world. We got, we got to promote it in Cannes, France, France, and it was really, really fun. fun. Um, but, but one of the things I learned is the power of story and that story is what sells and telling that story. And I know you're going to hear a lot about that from Tigran. So, so with, with that, that um, today, today our presenters, presenters are going to be Tigran, our director of video, and AJ Rounds, Rounds, who's our chief marketing, marketing uh, officer, officer here and, and one, one of the founders of RevRoad. Let, Let me tell you just a little bit about, about each one of those guys, guys okay? okay. Um, uh, AJ, AJ, in addition, in addition to, leading to leading marketing here, here and, and being a founder, founder he, he helps choose the entrepreneurs who get to be a part of RevRoad. And every single quarter, we have more than 18 to 20 uh, applicants, applicants for, for three, three spots, spots every quarter. quarter. So, so it's, it's really, really tough, tough process for us. For us. We, we have, have to sort through those, see which ones are the best, and we want to help all of them grow. That's why we do things like this for free as a community service. That's why we do something we call Rev Up on Thursday nights. Every Thursday night uh, is a deeper dive into an aspect of business to help those grow. Um, and many of you, I know, uh, attend those. And it's our goal to help each entrepreneur succeed, whether they can qualify to be a part of a Rev Road contingent or not. Um, and AJ helps us sort through each one of those. AJ has led multi, uh, I should say, multi hundred million dollar deals, uh, half billion dollar deals uh, in, a, in oil and gas. He's worked in uh, the, the big door to door sales companies. He's had a great wealth of experience in marketing in a wide variety of industries, which is one of the reasons why he's so, a, so capable at leading that group here. Um, Tigran, previous to working at RevRoad, worked for another company that some of you are familiar with uh, that's been very successful, and that's Imagine Learning, uh, which is right down the road. Uh, now has about 500 employees. They operate out of the Riverwoods. And they specifically were this young, scrappy company that grew to be one of the world's ma major players in learning English by using video to compete with the multi-billion dollar, multinational, uh, already established firms with whom they uh, fought against and won against. So uh, I had the privilege to get to know him at that organization and saw the great work that he did to make that possible. So with that introduction, let's all welcome AJ and Teague to the stage. Thanks, Darren. Wow, what a fantastic intro. So it looks like uh, we have the diehards here, right? Everyone's recovered from food, family, fireworks, and fun, right? So thanks for being here. We're excited to talk about video today. Um, like Darren said, story is king in video. So let's just get started here. Um, 
First of all, today what we want to cover is the importance of video in today's market. As you know, you, we can get lost on YouTube for hours. Has anyone done that? You don't have to raise your hands, obviously, but I'm sure we can all relate, right? One video after another, a few cats, a few dogs, and uh, before you know it, we've lost several hours. So video is so crucial. Number two, we want to talk about the RevRoad video creation process, which is, um, which is specific to RevRoad, and we go through a very uh, uh, detailed process in how we create video for our roadies and for our customers. Number three, what makes a good video, which is so critical. I mean, there are billions of videos out there, but only some are worth watching. And I'm sure as you get lost in YouTube for several hours, you know which ones I'm talking about. And then fourth, we want to have a Q&A session and have you ask the master here, Tigran, uh, the samurai, not the ninja, uh, a video, uh, some of the uh, tips of the, of the trade. So, um, and for those that haven't been here with us in the past, uh, for the last few months, uh, Betty and George, uh, they're not going to be here today. They're at the movies watching some videos, okay? <laughs> so my plug is go on to our YouTube RevRoad channel and watch the last two months that talk about Betty and George, okay? So let's get started, of course, with a video. Um, this video you may recognize was in the Super Bowl, expertly tailored to the Super Bowl crowd. But let's, uh, let's watch it and then we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah, just a typical Super Bowl car ad. Right? Or a hilarious beer ad. <laughs> or whatever ad this is. Whatever. But it's a Tide ad. What? It's a Tide ad. What makes it a Tide ad? There are no stains. Look at those clean clothes. What else would this be an ad for? Diamonds. A gift that lasts for a no. Tide. It's time for a cold refresh. <laughs> Tide ad. Fall into the sleep of no. you. No. Tide. No. Tide ad. Extreme. No. Tide. Tide! Meet the all new. No, it's a Tide ad. Tide. So, does this make every Super Bowl ad? A Tide ad? I think it does. Watch and see. <laughs> so great, great commercial done by Tide. Um, and, and may be the right kind of video for your company, but may not as well. So it just depends on what your company needs. So I'm going to turn the time over to Tigran to talk about what a great video for your company looks like. Check, check. Thanks, Ajay. Can I take the uh, clicker? Thanks, brother. Thanks, guys. Welcome. Uh, we are so excited. I have prepared a crazy cool presentation. Hopefully, it will be beneficial. It will be kind of a, we open the door a little bit to the kitchen so that you guys kind of can see kind of inner workings. Uh, hopefully, it will be beneficial. So, I want to start with a cool quote. If a picture paints a thousand words, then video certainly paints a thousand pictures. This is a, a quote that we use in our video department quite often. Um, but let's dive right in. So, Ever since human beings have opened their eyes, we've always wanted to make a mark, um, record something, tell a story, maybe for our next generations to come, maybe for, um, I don't know, uh, education or passing on something. Um, but history of capturing light, creating something um, other than uh, cave paintings started in, um, BCE, um, 1046 BCE, Chinese writings, mathematical writings talked about capturing uh, images, ca capturing light, trying to figure out optics. Aristotle, of course, talked about, Aristotle talked about, <laughs> sorry, my clicker. Aristotle talked about sundials and, uh, you know, watching the sun. Um, Ibn Yunus, uh, Egyptian astronomer, talked about solar eclipses, how to, uh, view them, uh, talked about also optics. But it wasn't until 1544 that a gentleman named Frisius, Dutch physician, mathematician, instrument maker, uh, diagrammed something in a book. This is the first published um, what we call camera. The word camera actually comes from this. He diagrammed a room, a uh, dark room, black room. In fact, that's what the Latin meaning means. Camera obscura, he named it meaning dark room. In here, he said, 
in 1544, there was a solar eclipse happening in January, and he wanted to observe it. He said this is a, a, a safe way to observe it. Make a dark room, puncture, puncture a hole in one of the walls, and let the light come in. What it happens, it just reflects the image on the back. So this was like the first concept of recording something other than a paint drawing on the, on the cave, uh, cave's walls. Um, that's, the word, that's where the camera comes from, which means it actually means room. Okay, so the uses. Um, artists started using it. Um, there's a popular artist uh, that used the camera up screw. They actually try to make it uh, based on the diagram. And um, what they do is record the light coming in, see the light coming in. And he, he put a, uh, Johannes Vermeer is very famous of doing uh, camera obscura paintings. Controversial at the time because people thought, well, that's okay, you're using technology then. Is this really impressionistic art? Um, he put a mirror in the back wall and he tried to reflect it back onto the surface so that he can trace it. After tracing it, he then put the color in. And he was uh, renowned for his works in capturing light. And you can see how accurate that is with oils. So technology is kind of slowly developing. We go to um, fast forward 100 years uh, later, uh, three gentlemen, a priest, manufacturer, and an entrepreneur. Uh, create a, some sort of um, chemical compound, uh, the celluloid film. This is where the image then can be recorded on, uh, on this chemical film in the back of that camera obscura. So um, they create the celluloid film and make it available commercially. By the way, who has heard of the Kodak? Kodak film, right? Uh, it's still in, still in use, Kodak film. Uh, George Eastman was the creator of um, Eastman and Kodak Company. Still in use, they still produce the film for photography. Fast forward, well, during this time, during the same time, um, Edward Mybridge, he's also considered the father of cinematography, father of video. He said, you know, I love what you guys are doing, taking pictures of the still, you know, recording. He was doing experiments. You know, science is becoming a crazy, technology is being pushed. But he said, you know, I, I love this idea of, of capturing an image on a celluloid film, but I, I, want, I want movement. I want to capture movement. How do we do that? So he was doing experiments. What he did is he took the camera that was still around, and he uh, took pictures of uh, horsemen riding around a racetrack. Um, in, a, in a kind of a sequential order, he put them together, and the result was this. This is considered to be the first video. This is the first video, first film. It's probably around uh, six frames, six to eight frames, maybe more, maybe 12. Um, but it, it was considered to be the first video. Later, Edison figured out a way to view it uh, with a kinetoscope rolling uh, uh, roller. Um, and thus, it started the video craze, the video revolution. Where are we now? We are here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny, I intentionally picked that clip because he's riding a horse, kind of, sort of. <laughs> and he's in a stable. I mean, ironic. <laughs> um, OK, sweet. So where are we now? Video has gone crazy. It has become an art form. Uh, it has, anytime you want to communicate something with movement, you go to video, GIFs, whatever it is. The uses are immense. It has taken a, a life of its own. Today, every major website has some sort of a video to start with, full screen. You go there, the first thing you go there, they want to communicate their story, they want to communicate their message using moving images, using video. Um, whether it's Reebok, Nike, um, here's Nike's main page, it starts off a video. You go there, first thing you see is video because they know the impact. Stats, uh, I wanted to bring a couple of stats. So the average user uh, spends 88% per, more time on the website with video. Um, this is significant because I, I want you to understand what this number means. This number means we are passing, we're transcending the era of um, marketing as far as desire for gain and fear of loss. Because then marketing was, we need to, we need to uh, entice the, the buyer with 
with either desire of gain or fear of loss. But this is the era of stories. Uh, I want to communicate. I want to have an engagement. I want to convince me, persuade me, rather than desire for gain versus uh, fear of loss. Um, this is an interesting chart I wanted to bring up. We all know that Google is the number one search engine, but YouTube has become the second search engine. So these are monthly queries. Um, the date, the chart is a little bit old, it's 2014, but what this proves is even then it was <laughs> second already and video has gone crazy now. Um, there's another chart I wanted to show you, kind of interesting. The YouTube users in 2017 were more than uh, Instagram and um, Twitter combined. I thought it was an interesting chart. I just, um, AJ found that one I wanted to show. So video is powerful. And uh, there's a story. I, I want AJ to come in and share an interesting story about how powerful actually video is. AJ. Can you hear me? Perfect. So um, video is super, super important in all companies across all industries. Who here likes country music? Don't be shy. Raise your hands. OK. Proud. Hi. And uh, who here likes United Airlines? Raise your hand. Oh, what? One, two. OK. I'm surprised to see any hands, but this is, this is OK. So um, these two go together with video. Uh, United Airlines learned a powerful lesson uh, back in 2009, which is a little dated, but it's still very applicable today. Uh, and this is a story I shared with uh, some of my students at Dixie when I was there. So this, this gentleman right here, his name is Dave Carell. And he's a Canadian, and he was an up-and-coming country music star. And so he had a flight from wherever, Halifax, I think, to Tennessee, and he was going through Chicago. And as he looked out the plane on the tarmac when he was in Chicago on his, his layover, they were throwing baggage on this tarmac. Along with that baggage was his guitar. And so United broke his Taylor guitar. Who here plays the guitar? Taylor's are nice guitars. And so they broke it. So for nine months, he went back and forth with United saying, hey, look, you broke my guitar. Uh, it really put some hardship on me. Can you help me out? And they basically, they do what United does best and said, not our problem. Go talk to someone else. And so he said, well, if they're not going to listen to me that way, let me create a video and see if they'll listen to me this way. So here's the video that he created. We'll talk about the impact that I had. Go ahead and roll that. I flew United Airlines on my way to Nebraska. The plane departed Halifax, connecting in Chicago's old air. While on the ground, a passenger said from the seat behind me, My God, they're throwing guitars out there. The band and I exchanged a look, best described as terror, at the action on the tarmac, and knowing whose projectiles these would be. So before I left Chicago, I alerted three employees who showed complete indifference towards me. As United breaks guitars. Uh, so you guys can kind of see what happens. So, um, so what are the results of this video? Let's check it out. Let's go to the next slide. So, so to, to date, date, this, this video, video um, has, has had 18.1 million, million views. views. Okay. 
Um, Dave Carroll was simply asking for a $1,200 repair, and because of the popularity, uh, United's stock dropped 10% in four weeks uh, to the tune of $180 million. Super powerful for video. And uh, eventually they came back and said, okay, well, we'll tell you what, we'll, we'll double your money and we'll, we'll give you 3000 And Dave said, not interested, don't care. They gave it to charity, which was fine, uh, which was actually headed by all of their executives. Um, and then Dave uh, took advantage of this and he uh, came up with two more sequels to this song. And now he's an author and he goes around consulting companies like United on how to create awesome videos. <laughs> so uh, anyway... That's the United story, and um, as we can see, it's super powerful. Companies have to pay attention to video because uh, they can tell an amazing story that can have, you know, a uh, hundred and eighty million dollar impact, easy on your business. So there's our story of United Breaks Guitars. I'm going to turn it back over to T to talk to us a little bit more about video and why video. Thanks, AJ. Just a quick, thanks, brother. Yeah, so crazy, right? Why, so why is video uh, so powerful? Because it's a conglomerative art form. It combines the literature art, writing, with visual art and musical art. Um, individually, they're their own art forms, but combined, it becomes an immensely powerful tool. Uh, by the way, I, I put these all in the same level, but... Um, <laughs> They're not in the same level. One is more important than the other two. Can you guess which one I'm talking to? But of those three art forms that video combines, literature, visual, and musical, one is better, um, stronger, more powerful, more important than the other two forms of art form. Which one? Not visual. Common to popular b belief, though, isn't it? We think visually, no, shoot out something, I think I heard it. Story. Which one? Darren said it. Literature. Story. It's the literature part. Yeah. That's why we, we say literature and the story is always king. Without story, all you have is just eye candy and uh, soundtrack. True? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> music video. <laughs> Without, even music videos have stories, the good ones. Um, so when, when you're looking for approaching a videographer or looking for a video, I want you to pay attention to that other part first. The eye candy and the stuff, those are techniques. Those are just skill levels. Those are craftsmanship. Here at RevRoad, we uh, pay close attention to story, whether it is the literature part, whether it is a testimonial we're doing, whether it is we're doing an explainer motion graphic video, whether we're doing um, promo piece, advertisement, doesn't matter. Everything that we've done in the past, even our logo animation, uh, which is a six second logo animation, that still has a story. Yes, in six seconds, you can tell a story. And when it has a story, it makes it immensely uh, important and powerful. Here's the team, here's our content team behind them all. Um, I, I tell my guys, I said, you guys are, are, are not uh, video technicians. You are storytellers. McKay is in the back filming the whole event. Dalton is taking photos. You know, your, your, your talent isn't the fact that you can hold the camera straight and press the record button. That's, that's not it. Those are just, that's a craftsmanship. What you guys are, you are storytellers, visual storytellers. I even introduce him. Like, McKay, he's a visual storyteller. <laughs> Um, okay, so what's the secret, right? The secret is this, the story arc. The story arc is what is our power. This is a simple um, three-act structure taken from a Hollywood movie. All movies have this three-act three structure. What it contains is act one, setup, exposition, introduction, act two, uh, culmination, confrontation, your buildup, character development, Act three is your resolution, climax. Um, and within them, they have their own points. But this is the typical um, structure that every Hollywood movie uses to tell their stories. Every script goes through this structure. Um, plays have different structure. You've probably heard four act, six act play. And here is a sample arc uh, for one of our videos. 
we have taken the same method. Yes, they're in the in entertainment industry, but that doesn't mean we can't tell good stories using that same structure. Here we have ours. Introduction first. You talk about, you set up the problem. You uh, show the issues, paint the picture, paint the world they're in, uh, introduce the, uh, the solution, the how, the who it is involved, the, some of the features that they help with the solution, uh, lead up to a climax or the moment to sell, um, and then later on, you, you, know, you have a resolution you know, uh, at the end and with a call to action. What do they do? What should they do? Once, they, once you have their attention, what should they do? Where do they go? That's our version of the arc. By the way, this, this arc um, is very interesting. It is, it is proven to be effective because it is common in human psychology. Um, Music is written the same way. Um, orchestra, songs, are, they have this, this, uh, some sort of a structure. Um, poetry, uh, short stories, books, novels, they're always written in, in, in a beginning, middle, and an end structure. Uh, concerts, even, are done in this arc. Yes. Because it, it communicates the best. That's the most effective. If we were aliens, maybe another method would con communicate. But since we're humans and you know, psychologies are the same, you know, we, we, we have this, found this effective pattern of storytelling, of communicating, of communicating an idea to another. Uh, even this very presentation was uh, pushed through this very story arc, because I know it. And I can, I can organize it the same way. By the way, within those arcs, they can be mini arcs. Uh, the other day I was watching a movie and I, and I, and I saw this arc in a car chase scene. There, it's a scene of cars chasing each other, but it has an arc. It, has a, it, it starts and then there's a spike and then there's a resolution. Uh, a fight scene, Rocky, you watch it and every fight has an arc like that. It's just psychology. So, um, Moving on, our process. So what is it? Every time a client comes to us, they ask for a video, we go through these basic questions. And I want you to know these questions we ask because this will help you to prepare the answers. You will do the homework now when you're approaching a video because they will be asking either these questions or something similar to it. First question, who's the audience? Who, who is the audience we need to communicate? Darren always says, what is the most important thing in a meeting? Know your audience, um, and it, it, it hardly ever is everyone. Resist the urge to say, "Well, everyone." <laughs> it, it really is. Hard. Even even the company that uh, business to business company like Journeyfront we have in our portfolio, they they have a very large audience, but it's not, it's still not everyone, uh, because everyone that hires is their audience, but it's not everyone. It's a large audience, not everyone though. So who is the audience? By the way, in this question, there has to be a certain kind of humility from us asking the question. Because, and humility is very important in this, in this recipe. Because if, if you don't ask this question in humility, you will not learn the answer. You will not properly listen. And, and, you, and we need to listen to your answer uh, when you say, well, it's this audience, it's this, it's an age group, a demographic, whatever it is. So there's a certain kind of humility in this, and the answer is never everyone. Second question is, what is the objective of the video project? What is it that you're trying to accomplish? What feeling are you trying to accomplish? And please don't let the answer be, we want to sell. That's, that's not the objective of the video. Yes, that might be a byproduct. Uh, it might influence a sale. But that, that's the mission of the company as your whole um, to sell. But, the objective of the video is something more specific. What do you want them to feel? Where do you want them to go? Is this a, are you persuading? Are you convincing your clients to something? Um, what emotion are you trying to invoke? And by the way, trust, trust us with this information. Trust us to understand what you want to do with the video. Is it just an announcement video? Is it just, uh, you know, just a fun eye candy? It's OK. It can be. Just say it. Trust us with this information. It's very important. Third question is, what is our budget? They will ask, they always ask. And, and again, it's never, it's never zero. 
no matter what your project production is, there's always something you can add to to increase the value. Always something. Then it's okay. Say it. Trust them. Um, they they don't want to uh, go crazy. They, they don't want to know how much they can go crazy with the money. They just want to see where wh how much are you prepared to make this better. Fourth question, how long does this need to be? Um, and again, it's never is well, as long as it needs to be. No, it's there is a stay short a attention span. We got to try to tell the story in a shorter time. Uh, if we had all the time in the world, yes, this wouldn't matter. But time is uh, time is the most expensive commodity right now. Nobody has that and everybody needs it. Everybody wants it. So how long does it be? We'll be asked and don't say it doesn't matter. No, it matter. Keep it short. Okay, this is my favorite one. Comparables. This is awesome. Okay, cool. So everybody asks for, when you come for a video, um, there's always something that you've seen. There's something always that you've liked. There's something that you've been influenced with, and, and, and you want to, you want to, you, you like elements of it, and you like us to take it, kind of just observe it, see what you've seen. Maybe we can get the same influence that you have gotten that same influence from. So share the comparables. Don't worry. We won't copy it. Copying is bad. Copying is plagiarism. We won't copy it. What we will do is what um, Pablo Picasso said, bad artists copy, good artists steal. <laughs> you, guys, you guys can't have an idea what he means. But what, what he means is um, when you steal something, you, you might take it. You know, it's been used. All stories have been already told. But if you see an item, an uh, element you like, you can take it and you can improve on it. You can make it better. When you make it better, it is not a, it's not a copy anymore. It's your own. You own it. You make it better. Uh, it's improved. It might have similar elements out there, but then we're all surrounded by similar elements. Um, I'll bring you examples to, to try to illustrate my point, what he means by steal something instead of copy it. For example, have you seen these movies? Right, short circuit, and it's all. Then I'll try to bring up a couple other examples. Wally, great. Now, obviously, they were. It's pretty clear that they had influence, right? They liked the robot. It kind of looked cute. Uh, short circuit. Both are great stories. I love the both movies. But this is not a copy. This is a steal, because Pixar might have taken the element that they liked and they wanted to improve on it. They they made it different. It was different. It was way different. It was improved. They made it their own. Both stories stand strong because they are not copies. Here's another example. Echelon Conspiracy and Eagle Eye. Um, they came about, uh, about the same time, 2009. Um, and if you look at this, I don't know if you've seen them. Have you guys seen these? Nobody has seen these. <laughs> wow, cool. <laughs> Seriously, you've seen them? Sweet. Both of them? Uh, just Eagle Eye. Just Eagle Eye. Go, go back and watch Echelon Conspiracy and, and see what you feel. You, you'll feel what I mean. Um, it, what they had done is instead of taking elements, it's, it's exactly the same movie. It's not even a remake. If they called it remake, it would have been a little more justified. But they took the same, same story. They took the same story. They just changed the setting and the characters. And that doesn't work because they took it from the king. They took it from the literature part. Take elements as you want, visual elements, musical elements, other elements. But if you if you temper with the story and you don't make it your own, it's visible and both are, they, one ruins the other. Usually the one that comes before is the original one, but it becomes a kind of almost a plagiarism. Copy, not a steal. Here's another example. Dark City and Matrix. Love both movies. Both are great, but Matrix took the elements, took the, even the idea. They didn't take the story, they took the idea. They took the idea, the element of the idea, and they improved it. They made it better. It was not a copy. Both stand, both are great. Here's another example. We've seen these, right? Uh, both came about the same time. Um, but again, Pixar knows how to do this. When they take a story, when they take an element, they are not afraid. When they come up with another movie that um, has, has pre-existing elements, they're not afraid. They said, no, we know how to do the story right, and they do. They, Pixar is the only example I can think of that, has, that does not sacrifice on storytelling part. They spent one year for the Toy Story script, just the script for one year. They did not do anything except to process the script. 
So they know how to do this. This was a steal. It was not a copy. Both stand their different stories. Similarities, a lot of similarities. Came out at the same time, too. Here's the most recent example. I'm hoping you guys have seen these two. Book, uh, Book, of, um, Book of Life and Coco. I love them both. Great stories. Have you guys seen these ones? These, this pair? Yes. Right? When you go back, you watch Book of Life, you go, same cultural elements. Uh, same time, almost the same time period, within a within few years. But again, when, when Coco came out, I said, oh man, I, I love Book of Life. Don't, don't do this. Don't do this, Pixar. Please, please. But I kind of had trust and faith too. They, they weren't going to mess it up, and they didn't. It's a steal. It's an amazing steal. They both stand. They both are great. In fact, I think Coco is just a little bit better, but I love them both. <laughs> um, okay, I don't know if you guys seen this one. Point Break and Fast and the Furious. Have you guys seen Point Break? The, the original one, the old one, because they made a remake. So this is exactly like the Eagle Eye comparison. This is a copy. They took the story, and they, they, they basically remade it with a different setting, different, uh, it's, it's the same thing. They even, the uh, FBI agent lets him go at the end. I mean, it's the same thing. It's like plagiarism almost. <laughs> Carter probably has seen these. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. So, but I know what you're going to say. This is my last example. But I, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, true, though, Fast and the Furious franchise brought more money than <laughs> two of the point breaks combined. This is true. But we are not in the entertainment industry. We are in the business of creating, crafting the right message to communicate to the right audience business. We aim to establish long-lasting connections based on loyalty and trust. Why? Because sales will take place. Exchange will happen based on these connections and based on these long-term relationships. And entertainment industry doesn't think that way. They, they don't care about your loyalty. You might develop loyalty, but that wasn't their intent. They just want a one-off, quick, sweet, you know, fast nickel, sweet. Uh, copies work there. Fast and the Furious is an example. It's a proof. But when we do it, we, when we mimic their art, when we mimic their arc, we're not in the entertainment business. So we have to pay attention to long-term connections uh, based on loyalty, trust, so that, again, sales will take place. Exchange of uh, ideas will happen. Um, so how do we do it? The, the phases. We have three production phases. Every video project goes to pre-production, production, post-production. These are kind of common terms in the Hollywood industry, too. They always use it. Doesn't matter what the production is, what the video project is, we always go through three production phases, beginning, middle, and an end kind of thing. Pre-production consists of uh, all the planning you can think of, script writing, the outline, the, you know, the ideas, the scheduling, um, uh, planning. Um, here's, a, here's an example of an outline we did in the past project. Uh, everything starts with a pen and a paper. You, before you even hit the script and start typing, no, you've got to understand what, what, how it's going to be laid out on the, so you can see the arc. You have to, first of all, see the arc. Sketch, draw, whatever you need to do. You know your first act, second act, third act. Place them in. Fill them in. See if it works. Does it work when you see it? If it works, then go into the script writing process. Here's an example of a few scripts that we write. Once that outline is solid, then we go into the script process. We start writing it. Uh, the um, videos that we do is not typical um, Hollywood script. This is a different format where we keep the audio on the left side, the video and the visual on the right side. Or actually, I, I swapped them. One side is visual, one side is audio. Uh, locations. Locations are also very important. This is also done during the pre-production pre phase, the planning phase. We go take pictures. We do concept art. We bring the pictures back. We show the, uh, uh, the concept, the digital concept, how it's going to look, how is it going to feel. Locations are very important. The only reason we like James Bond movies is because they celebrate. They, they bank on the locations, man. <laughs> Every movie has a crazy location they celebrate. Once everything is approved, the scripts are, go through iterations, and it's approved. They go to, we, go to a pre, we go to production phase, where we actually start filming the process, uh, set up scenes and film. Here are some pictures of our past projects that we have done. Um, this has its own uh, phase and its own time. And then after that, we move into our post-production. This is the heavy lift. This is the fun part, right? 
we, we take out the green screen. Um, if it's shot in the studio, we add effects, musical effects, sound effects, narration is recorded, um, voiceover, uh, all the graphics and the color correction, color adjusting is done. What you see is never what it was shot. It's always been polished and uh, beautified. Um, by the way, that scene was kind of, I think, from uh, Final Destination or something. It was a crazy scene, bridge breaking. Here's, here's a small clip I want to show you of what we did with our past projects. We needed a green screen shot, and, and here's kind of a breakdown. Jess, do you want to play that? So you just a small clip of what, what it entails. Um, anytime you need a green screen, you know, there's a process that you'd go through. Um, here's, I want to show you another example that is not done by us. Uh, this is BMW um, made a commercial. And, and again, I want you to kind of pay attention. What was it before and what, what, how it became later on? What we see is not what it was. It, we'll show the ad first and then the breakdown. Go ahead, Jason. Thanks, man. BMW has designed brakes so intelligent they talk to the rain sensor. And when told it's raining, they apply just enough friction to stay dry and in control. An idea that's arrived not a moment too soon. Test drive a BMW 3 Series today and experience the ultimate driving machine. Again, what we see, crazy, makeover, right? I mean, before and after is nuts. What we see, outcome, is not how they shot it. Um, this is a scene, breakdown scene from um, The Avengers. I think due to time, I think I might skip this one. Unless you guys really want to see it. <laughs> yeah, let's watch it. Crazy scene. <laughs> a lot of work has done. You can see the green screen in the background. So these are our phases that every project goes through. Um, we try not to sacrifice any one of them for the sake of time because all three are important in their due time. The post-production and the pre-production carry kind of the heavy, heavy lift. So we try definitely not to sacrifice any time there. Um, Good video. So what would make a good video? Understand the story of the company. With humility, ask the right questions and listen so that you can learn their story right. You need to understand their story in order to tell it. Um, understand the audience that that story needs to connect to. Without understanding both, you cannot make a long-lasting relationship. Uh, craft the story with, a, with an arc. With that arc, that, that psychology arc that has the beginning, middle, and end you know, uh, act one, act two, act three. 
keep it short. Uh, successful videos are no longer than three and a half minutes, between a minute to three and a half. Know how to implement elements that the client has shown interest in and inspiration from and improve on it, make it better. Uh, add to it. Make, it, make it to stand on its own, not look at it and say, oh yeah, that's a copy of that other one. No, it's got to be your own. Understand how to steal versus copy. Um, to, to end, end I, I kind of want to show, show you one, 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 one a good, a good favorite, favorite of, of uh, my videos. videos. Um, let's, let's watch, watch it, it and I'll, I'll, I'll talk, talk about, about it later. But, but I, I want you to pay attention to two things. things. How, how it makes you feel and also pay attention the cost it would have taken them to make this. And on the eighth day, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody willing to get up before dawn, milk cows, work all day in the fields, milk cows again, eat supper, then go to town and stay past midnight at a meeting of the school board. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody willing to sit up all night with a newborn colt and watch it die and dry his eyes and say, maybe next year. I need somebody who can shape an axe handle from a persimmon sprout, shoe a horse with a hunk of car tire, who can make harness out of hay, wire feed sacks and shoe scraps, who planting time and harvest season will finish his 40 hour week by Tuesday noon and then pain in from tractor back, put in another 72 hours. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody strong enough to clear trees and heave bales yet gentle enough to yean lambs and wean pigs and tend the pink combed pullets who will stop his mower for an hour to splint the broken leg of a meadow lark. So God made a farmer. It had to be somebody who'd plow deep and straight and not cut corners. Somebody to seed, weed, feed, breed and rake and disc and plow and plant and tie the fleece and strain the milk. Somebody who'd bail a family together with the soft, strong bonds of sharing. Who would laugh and then sigh and then reply with smiling eyes when his son says that he wants to spend his life doing what dad does. So God made a farmer. Powerful video. What did that make you feel? How did you feel? Right? <clears throat> Grateful. What was your comment? Same. Same thing. It's going deeper. Now compare that, this video with what we watched with the Tide. It, it, I mean, it's a car ad. I mean, they're both product ads. But one connected with you. The other one mentioned Tide five times. And it was funny. I loved it too. Both, both are great. Both are two, mi two million spots on the Super Bowl. Uh, but one of them somehow had the power to move you. Right? It was heavy on the story part. It was heavy on the, in fact, it was very little eye candy, if anything. It was very, very little visual. They just supported the visual and the music. The rest was just story, heavy on the story. The two examples, two extreme examples of what you can do. And one probably cost them make two million to produce this one, certainly a fraction of that. Um, story is important. Now, I would, I would love to have everything done in-house. Uh, we have a team here, everything to go through us uh, so that we have close attention to the pre-production, production, post-production phases. But there are other um, resources out there as well. On the left column is uh, online resources, freelancers, contractors. Uh, there's a lot of help. Um, on the right side, there's production houses studios in Utah County, Salt Lake County that you can approach. But now that you are equipped with the knowledge of what to look for, when you do approach them, um, and if you have comments, you can always ask us, uh, go through us, but you know what to look for now when you're approaching a freelancer or a contractor. It doesn't matter. Help is help. You know, it's all good. But you know now what to look for, the story. Um, oh, yeah, the most important thing. <laughs> have cats in your videos, instant ratings, because <laughs> it goes crazy. <laughs>
Sweet. Question answers. I think we got like what three minutes. Any any dying question? Yes, Rebecca, please. So, with that list of resources you held up, why would some why would an entrepreneur, somebody in the audience here, want to go that direction instead of doing it on their iPhone? Yeah, good question. I mean, um, there's a lot you can do with the iPhone. It's not about the iPhone. Um, it's about the know-how. We, we talk about the story again. So these are professionals in their field who have um, the know-how, how to produce a story, how to connect. Um, again, it's not about the iPhone. It's not about what you can do yourselves. You certainly can. But w wouldn't you want to have someone who is you know, equipped with the knowledge to, to do it and who has done it in the past, who has the experience to tell stories? Hope that answered. It's not about the iPhone. And, and it's about results too. If you want true results, you want to go with you know those that know exactly how to craft the story and build it to where it's compelling and, and produces an ROI. Great question. Any other questions? Yeah, please, gentlemen over there in the back. Let me bring in this yeah, mic. Yeah, let's the recording on the let's wait for the mic. Thanks. Yes, sir. With regards to ROI, you brought that up just now. Do you see them? Um, I mean, video is video. It's been there a while. You know, went from picture to video. Do you see any technological changes that are going to change the way people use video, and that you're going to have to interact with to um, reach the customer? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have seen the technological change nonstop, from the camera obscura to the video to the phone. We're going into VR, so the technology will change. Whether it's painters painting over glass or video somehow capturing an image. Of course, technology will change, but I don't think telling stories will change. Uh, we always are inclined to want to tell stories. Uh, and that's why I want to push towards the story part more than technology and the eye candy part. And the, it, 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 we could do the same thing with VR right now. I mean, it is changing, right? We're going into the visual reality world. Uh, with that, it's eye candy if there is no story. Follow up. Um, it, it remember that the quote I brought up, um, when you create a video, you tell your story, you, you share your values, you try to communicate with your buyers or influencers. When that connection is successful, when that connection takes place and they suddenly care about you and um, uh, long term, long lasting connection takes place based on loyalty and trust, then sales can take place. Well, how do I see if I've done that? I mean, I'll, I'll take this please. one. So great question. Thank you for asking that. So when we meet with our roadies and we decide, you know, what videos they're going to need and how we're going to shoot them, oftentimes what we'll do is we'll set metrics and things of that nature beforehand that we want this video to help hit. And, and, that, can, and that can funnel into cells. That can funnel into online impressions. It depends on where the video is going to be shown, what medium is going to be used for that video. So it's all part of the full... Uh, overall comprehensive assessment we're doing with the video to make sure that it's going to meet the needs of the entrepreneur. Great question. Did that answer your question? Perfect, thanks. Yeah, uh, probably just a, you know, a follow-up question to that. I, I think it's, uh, you know, how, how much of the story do you have to tell? And what is the story that captures the interest of the customers. Now, for example, maybe as uh, uh, you know, you go through these production phases. Uh, is it during that process that, uh, as you interact with the entrepreneur, uh, whatever is being said, you try to kind of point them to kind of direction, a direction that will fully capture the attention of customers. How how much of that do we have to really tell, and what is it that? will bring about that connection. Yeah, um, I can take that. that. It happens in the pre-production phase. When we ask the question, who is your audience, what's your story, we're learning about them, and we're learning what would be best to communicate to their audience. Now that we are equipped with the knowledge who the audience is, what reacts to, with this audience, and what your story is, then we can find a way to connect them. Everything happens in the pre-production phase. A lot of questions with the client, yeah, there's always 
It's part of the find out stage. We want to make sure to find out what's the most compelling aspect of your story. And then to Tigran's point earlier, keep it short enough to keep the customer engaged and, uh, and, and, and get them to a conversion. Yeah, and you don't want to tell the whole story. You want to tell just enough that's engaging and exciting so that they realize, I want to buy this product or service and go with you as a company. Yeah, it's, different, it's different for all. It's, all, it's never the same. Mm -hmm. We just have to be good listeners for that to ha happen. Great. Great questions. I, yes, um, ma'am. We have one. one more? Yeah, let's do last one more. One. Mm -hmm. um, this is a way hard question to answer, but just to give us a ballpark idea, it, w if we're looking in, into working with a contractor, like what kind of budget... I, again, I'm sure there are like a bajillion factors to put into this, but just like a uh, like minimal viable product, starter video, even ballpark it. Range. Let's give it a range. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely range. I mean, this is one we definitely try to avoid answering because, yeah, it depends on so many things. What do you want to do? Or if this is the first time? Um, I mean, it just, it just depends. You, you, this way I brought those examples. One costed them two million to produce. The other one costed them a lot less, I'm sure. It was just images, right? I mean, it was not even video. It was just pictures that were a little bit of effects done. So uh, range, yeah, um, man, I can't. MVP, even... probably anywhere from 1,500 up to 10 grand for your MVP. Depending on, of course, the style and, and length and, and lots of factors, but. Yeah, you, you might want to shop around. I mean, ask for quotes, and it's okay to ask for quotes. Right. Uh, give them a concept and ask for a quote. Preferably, um, we want to help you first, right? But if for whatever reason that doesn't help you out, then there are some resources we can help direct you to. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. Sorry well I done. went over. Darren. Appreciate you being here. Thank you, Tegan. Stay here. Good. Oh, I've got mine. Thanks. So proud of these guys. They're wonderful. They do all kinds of videos. Uh, I love some of the questions about ROI and how, do you, how much of the story do you tell and what's the budget because it really is such a broad span. Um, one of the things that helps illustrate that is, uh, like if you look at this morning, uh, before you all came, we were having a meeting with the CEO and founder of FireUp. You know, it's a crowd engagement app that's just incredible and, you know, can get 67 and a half thousand fans in an NFL stadium to engage uh, simultaneously in concert with one another. And, and yet in those um, six seconds of their logo reveal, uh, Tigran and his team have been able to quickly tell the story of what it does in six seconds, visually. And so before we even start sharing what it is, it's apparent to them. Or Josh Cross back here, the CEO uh, and founder of, of GoPlug and Ethos, Ethos, one of the things that he's done is um, you know, we recently started filming with Elizabeth Smart uh, for the global uh, mobile power and global tracking. So just the choice of the global spokesperson instantly tells part of your story that it has to do with safety and security and tracking, uh, bringing things safely home. So there are so many different aspects of that that I'm so proud that these guys have the ability to do that in many ways. Thank you for doing that. Thanks. Thank Let's yep. give them a hand. Thanks,